In New Orleans, there was an anti-eviction protest. I want to show you part of it here. I don't know why, but that guy walking by at the end there, he reminded me of Biden. I mean, he's obviously not Biden, but something about him reminded me of Biden. I'm not sure what it was. But um, so they're blocking the courthouse. They weren't letting anybody in. And what we have right now in the U.S. is a, a weird system where you have different states and, and cities and localities with different rules when it comes to uh, evictions and foreclosures. There was the temporary ban on it for COVID-19. I think the federal one ran out. I don't know if they re-upped it, but you do have this weird system of a bunch of patchwork where some states, some cities have anti-eviction protections for now because of the pandemic still, which is, you know, ripping through this country. So here are the states that have no measures or moratoriums at all. Again, federal ban has either gone away or is going away. Um, and here are the states that are just like, you're on your own. Alabama, Arkansas, Kansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Nebraska, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Georgia, Idaho, and West Virginia. Now, remember, we covered the story the other day, that amazing graphic from CNBC. 59% of renters in West Virginia can't pay their rent. 59%. Tennessee's on this list as well, 55% in Tennessee. And you go state by state there, everybody's in that ballpark. You know, again, the lowest number was Vermont, and it was 22%, which is still nearly a quarter of the renters in Vermont can't pay the bills. Most places are between, like, 35% and 50%. Can't pay their rent. Can't do it. So... The people are being failed by their politicians at every level, at the federal level, at the state level, at the local level. People are just being failed by their politicians because here we have a situation. It's a historic housing crisis, the likes of which we've never seen because it's a direct result of the pandemic and the economic implosion. So this is not the fault of any individuals. But all these people are going to lose their houses? All these people are, are going to get kicked out if they can't make the rent? In the middle of a pandemic? Again, people don't understand what they're asking for. The government doesn't understand what they're asking for. These George Floyd protests are just a warm-up. Because it's going to get a hell of a lot worse if nearly 50% of the country's renters can't pay the bills. So what do you expect? But listen... Direct action is the best way, and this is direct action. Now, we're going to cross a bridge eventually where it's not just an amalgamation of states that have no protections. We're going to cross a bridge eventually where every state in the country, every state in the country, has no more anti-eviction protections. And when that happens... Oh my God. I don't know what we're going to see, but it ain't going to be pretty. At the very least, it's going to be protests. Very likely there will be riots as well. Um, there will be whatever parties in power will get so wiped out from coast to coast. It'll be probably historic. It'll probably be a historic landslide. And um, But what will the next government do? Which is the terrifying part, because, okay, what do you have? You either have Republicans, or you have the Diet Republicans, the corporate Democrats. And we get this sense that no matter what, they're not going to do anything for us. Which is why the direct action is so necessary. But of course, you have the complicating factor of it's still a pandemic, so when you do direct action, you're putting yourself at risk, and you're putting others at risk. So we're really just caught in between a rock and a hard place in a way that I don't think we've ever been in U.S. history. But make no mistake about it, this is 
totally inexcusable, the current system. How can it be that the government just threw money at the problem endlessly? But where did the money go? It went to corporations. That's the CARES Act. $5 trillion at the discretion of Goldman Sachs lackey Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary. He's just going to give it to the corporations who he's buddy-buddy with. Of course, that's what he's going to do. This is where the money went. So unless, I don't know if you're keeping track here, but every year we have a record military budget. Bigger than the next 10 biggest countries combined. Bloated beyond belief. Every year we have a military budget like that. How many times have we done the Wall Street bailouts, even previously? And now, as a direct result of COVID-19, the corporations get bailed out, and by the way, they turn around and fire people anyway. This is what happened with Boeing. Give them billions of dollars. They say, thank you so much. We needed this in order to keep functioning. Then they turn around and fire people anyway. No, but the money was given to you under the assumption that you wouldn't fire people. Well, guess you should have made that terms, huh? And they didn't make it terms. You want to know why? Because the politicians are working for the corporations. They're not working for you. Look at what the market was propped up with a trillion dollars of liquidity per day from the Federal Reserve. By the way, isn't that curious? When the Federal Reserve pumps the stock market with an influx of cash, it's called quantitative easing. It sounds official, doesn't it? All that is is welfare for the stock market. But why does it sound so official? When you get a check in order to pay your bills, do they say the government is doing quantitative easing for you? No, they say you're, you're getting an entitlement benefit and it's welfare. So when you get it, it's got the pejorative connotation. When corporations get it, it's got the official sounding name. We're pumping liquidity into the marketplace, pumping liquidity and capital into the marketplace through quantitative easing. See, that's, it's a way... The lingo is a way to try to normalize corporate socialism as they don't do socialism for the people. And so we're in a situation where nearly half the country can't pay their rent. 20% real unemployment. The people who still have jobs are taking giant pay cuts. The economy is imploding. And President Numbnuts is bragging about the NASDAQ. And all the bailout bills are top-heavy. Why is it there's never a bailout bill that's bottom heavy? Why does that never happen? Why is it never, oh, we bailed out the uh, the homeowners and the renters. We bailed them out. All they do is give you a measly $600 extra unemployment benefit, and then it expires immediately, and then they blame you and tell you to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and say you're lazy and you're not going back to work because of that. Ain't no laziness involved here, son. This is the U.S. economy imploding. Is the argument that, like, over 100 million people woke up one day and were like, now we're going to be lazy and immoral and unethical and not work? Is that what happened? Or is it the pandemic and the subsequent depression and it's no fault of their own, but the government is still sitting around doing nothing for the people? Buckle up, man. This unrest is going to get unreal. Because people are in dire straits like they've never been before. So we're just, this is just a warm-up act. Even these anti-eviction protests. These things are going to spread... And I'll tell you this, the government needs to pull an FDR. If they don't pull an FDR, Lord knows what will happen. Because you know what FDR did, right? FDR was effectively, in many ways, the savior of capitalism. Because he stepped in and said, I, if I don't massively redistribute the wealth, then you will have a socialist or communist revolution. Because the Great Depression made everything so volatile that it was, would, have been, would have been possible for, you know, communism or socialism to take over the country. And so FDR stepped in and said, no, what we'll do is we'll redistribute the wealth. We'll do high taxes on the wealthy. We'll do the New Deal. And what this did is, it's like he stepped in and said, no, we're not going to do socialism or communism. We're going to do social democracy. And so it was like the midway point between the people and the ruling class. And, you know, I would argue that what he did worked phenomenally well. The New Deal worked phenomenally well. Also, it has to be said that in terms of the economic output, yes, World War II helped. Any Keynesian will tell you that. Um, but that we're in the same boat today. If you don't have massive redistribution of wealth, if you don't have genuine social democracy, if you don't have Medicare for all and the UBI, I don't know what's going to happen. But it's going to get ugly because it's already ugly.